discuss a uh, connection between infinite dimensional algebra and conformal link to conformal field theory and probability. So um, I think a good place to look for such connection is a field theory because in, in some way, if you think about <coughs> field theory, at least Euclidean field theory in terms of static, statistical mechanics, uh, Euclidean field theory is more or less a way to define or try to define probability measure on infinite dimensional space, configuration space. That's what statistical mechanics does. So uh, on the other hand, we all know since uh, Victor's works and many others that infinite dimensional algebra is useful to try to make sense of some field theory and go for a field theory. So one of uh, the simple example you surely know is that uh, for some, when you look at the ball in motion, which are just a way to describe random function with some property, this may be represented in terms of free fields and the measure, the Brownian me measure is simply uh, the data of the vacuum for the uh, free field. So that's one of the basic examples. But the one uh, I'm going to talk is a measure which are linked to uh, random geometry, which try to give measure on uh, extended objects which arise in, in uh, statistical mechanics or field theory. <coughs> on one hand, there is the stochastic linear evolution, which gives measure on curves, uh, which are planar curves in a simply connected, connected and simply connected domain. Or, uh, Brownian root soup, which are give measures on loops. So a uh, Brownian loop soup is a Poisson process with target space loops. So for each realization, you have a set of loops which are overlapping. And if you look at the boundary of the cluster made by the overlapping loops, uh, loops, you get a new loops which may be identified with loops with the boundary of cluster in statistical mechanics. Uh, SLE gives, uh, as I said, lead to measure of curves. And here is a sample of uh, what SLE can be. This is taken from a, a realization of the Ising model in two dimensions at the critical temperature. So the, uh, in the Ising model, you have two, you have on each, uh, at each point on the space, you have one degree of freedom, which takes two values, either blue or uh, white or black. And if you look at the interface between black and white region, you have a curve, which is random, because it depends on the samples. And this curve has many properties, and the measure on this curve is given by SLE. <coughs> OK, so uh, what I want to try to explain is uh, some algebraic property linked to uh, Virasso algebra uh, and these, uh, these measures. So I have to tell you what SLE is. So since uh, <laughs> M of today is just to play with some algebra, I will more or less forget all about the random geometric collapse of SLE, which is probably not a good idea, but that will be the rule of the game of today. So the way SLE works is try to look, to define the measure on the curve by looking out, the, by walking along the curve and trying to decipher the property of the curve when you let it go, when you walk along it. So you code the curve by some conformal map, and this map is a map which uniformizes the domain where you draw the curve. Here is the per half plane. So the do this, that domain minus the curve is conformally equivalent to the domain without the curve. And there is, so there is a uniformizing conformal map which code if you normalize properly completely the curve. So if you can give a measure on that conformal map, then you give a measure on the curve. And SLE defines the measure on that conformal map by solving a stochastic differential equation was uh, source is just a Brownian motion. So from the measure on the Brownian motion, you induce a measure on the conformal map, so you induce a measure on the curve. That's SLE. So the way it works, if you just want to do it purely algebraically, is that you look at, you look at the curve on the upper half plane, and you look at this conformal map, which I call Y, and <laughs> this you normalize, uh, normalize the conformal map such that it's a uh, fixed uh, infinity, and that is derivative at infinity, that it starts with z. This gives two conditions. And then you want that the tip of the curve is mapped, let's say, back to the point where it started. So this gives three conditions. It fixes the conformal map completely. So uh, you may expand the conformal map into power of 1 over z, which gives you a series of coefficients. 
<coughs> where the first one is fixed to one, the second one is fixed to the Brownian motion, it's proportional to the Brownian motion, and then you solve SLE uh, le the linear equation. And to solve the linear equation, what you have to do, you just take your, your series, compute the inverse, which can be also expanded into power of 1 over z. This gives coefficients which I call pj, pg, which are function of the a that you can define recursively. P1, so I will give two examples. P2 is 1, P3 is minus a1, and P4 I don't, I don't remember. And then you solve this series of infinite equations, which are just the uh, derivative of a i is pi, or 2 pi. And this defines all the coefficients a, j, as integral of the Brownian motion, see, recursively. Now, everything is coded into this coefficient. So if you want to, want to know property of the curve, geometrical property of the curve, you have to ask for, uh, look for function, which will code this function of the a, j, a, a coefficient, which will code for this property. So all the observables in, the, in, the, in this game, in the SLE, uh, observable linked to the curve are according to function which are aj. And what we, I want to play with today is try to answer the question. I know the answer, so answer the question. What is the uh, uh, structure of the space of martingales uh, which are polynomial in this coefficient? So what uh, martingale uh, are, uh, when you have a process, martingale is something which has a few properties, but more or less physically it means that it's conserved in mean. So in the integrable system, you have many conserva conservation law. Here it will be uh, asking for conservation law is too much for each realization. So you only act for conservation law in means. So Martingale is a bit more, but it's more or less the same thing. So <coughs> we want to know the structure of the space of Martingales, which are probabilistic objects. And why we want to know that is because from Boltzmann's uh, basic rule of uh, statistical mechanics, we know that correlation function of uh, statistical mechanics, uh, which come from statistical mechanics, so, uh, all observable in statistical mechanics, are going to be martingales. So, on, uh, so if we know uh, the space of martingales for all process, we will know the more or less all the correlation functions which are linked to the property, correlation function of the statistical model which are linked to the property of the curve. And this is how you make the contact between SLE, you make a correspondence between SLE and the corresponding field theory for the, uh, which is associated to the statistical model, which is a conformal field theory. So that was the motivation for looking at Martingale, but now we forget about Martingale. The motivation, which I just look at algebraic property. So uh, if you want to, uh, if you, a polynomial Q uh, is, a, you ask for a polynomial Q to be a Martingale, you have to ask that its time derivative or time derivative of its, of its mean is zero. This leads to a differential equation, which is just written here, which is a second differential equation, and this operator, second order differential operator, is linked to the second order differential operator, which is associated to the stochastic process which generates the curve. Every time you have a Markov process, you have a second, second order differential operators. <coughs> so what, what I am I want to look at is that the property of the space of polynomial which are in the kernel of the differential operators. <laughs> so you can look, you can give a degree to the variable a, and the degree corresponds to the indices, and you may compute degree by degree what is uh, this kernel, you find some polynomial. You can look at this, uh, for example, the polynomial which are function of the two first variables, a, a1 and a2, so if you solve the differential equation which defines SLE, you find that A2 is T and A1 is a Brownian motion. And the solution of this differential equation is just, so yes, there should not be a 2, is uh, this function exponential of Xi minus alpha square T, which is a generating function uh, of uh, Brownian uh, martingale, which are local in time. That's the exponential. Okay. So uh, that's one example. But now, if you want to, to find the space of all polynomials, what I'm going to claim is that this space is a Vira Soro module, uh, irreducible for generic kappa. Kappa is just a co proportional coefficient here, whose character is given here. 
So in, in a way, you characterize some space of some Martin, martingales, which are functional of integral of the Brownian motion, and this space is a virus row module. So uh, <coughs> this comes from the connection between SLE and C CFT, but I use this as a pretext to play a little bit with <laughs> representation of the virus row algebra, and some of them are inspired by the work of Victor on uh, Victor Katz on Wakimoto. No, less than one, and depend on kappa. I will give you. From here. But the fact that there is this character means that there is a new vector in the motor. Okay, so the way, one way, so there is many way to do it. Uh, I remember one of the papers by Victor on E8 was, I don't remember, 118 ways of constructing E8 representation of uh, affine E8 at level one. So here there is probably less way of proving this correspondence, but I know at least uh, six, something like that. Um, so the way we do it is by uh, using some kind of representation of the Virasoro algebra, which is inspired by the borel veil construction. <coughs> uh, so the borel veil construction is that if you look at section of uh, this co question of uh, complex group by the Borel subgroup, then you have an action of the group of, of the group on the C space of section, and this gives you a representation of the group as first order differential operators acting on this function. So if you do it for a finely algebra, you get something which is close to what uh, Victor on Wakimoto did, which is a, what physics, in physics calls the free field representation of the vest domino written model. So uh, here I will do it for Viras or algebra. So you look at, it's a bit formal, but it's purely algebraic. So you can do it even if you don't have a virus or group, you don't have gross decomposition, but you can nevertheless play all the algebraic rules which are involved in the Borel veil construction. So the Borel, you have two Borel subalgebra, so you have the same decomposition as Concevich uh, uh, talked about, you have the tri two triangular subalgebra, and minus one on it plus, you have the Carton subalgebra, which is made of the dilatation plus the central element, and the L plus and N minus correspond to conform map, which fix either zero or the infinity. Now, if you uh, look at the question, let's say, question by the, on the left, by the Borel subgroup, this is more or less identified, at least locally, with N minus one. And I can view my element, Y, or the coefficient A, J, as coordinate on N minus one. So I am looking for the action of the virus row group, whatever it means, of N plus H one minus one, on function of, <coughs> the f of the function of variable A1, A2, and all the AG, with some property of the conformal transformation. And if you apply the machinery, this gives you representation of the virus or algebra on, uh, on that function. And this representation is in terms of first order differential operators, differential operators in this infinite number of variables. These are different from the level one representations that you will get using free, free field. And uh, this representation depends on two, two numbers which enter the way you define section, which, because to define section, you have to def use some characters of the Cartan subalgebra. Cartan subalgebra has two elements, the dilatation and the central element. So representation will depend on two numbers, central charge and the weight, the eigenvalue of the, the weight of the highest weight vectors. This is formal. GC just complex. This conformal map with complex coefficient. You, know, you don't have group. I will tell you about what could be the group. You don't have group, but you never can nevertheless do any, all the, ma the manipulation which are purely algebraic, which are involved in the Borel veil construction, because you have this ghost-like decomposition. So you can do, on you can look at two. <coughs> at the two questions, either on the left or on the right. And this gives you two dif different sets of differential operators, which both satisfy the virus or algebra. OK? And they do, do not commute. But they act on the same kind of function. Now, if I go back to my problem, and I look at the differential operator I was interested, which was the second differential operator, this one, and I can identify these differential operators in terms of the of the virus or ge generators I construct, uh, constructed using the Borel veil construction. 
Because if you do the Borel construction, you find that L1 is, a dif is just a differentiation with respect to A1, the first coefficient, and L2 is a uh, formula. So now, what I'm interested in is looking at the kernel of A on the function of S1. I can use now, so to define A, I use uh, one of the constructions, the left one. Now I can use a second construction with the right question. And then uh, what you can check is that if you choose C on H in an appropriate way, the second Virasso generators <laughs> will act on the kernel of A. We know that they form a representation. But it's only when you fix C on H that they act on the kernel. And why they act on the kernel? Because if you choose that value of C on H, then the commutator between these differential operators on Ln is proportional to the kernel with some polynomial. <coughs> so the Ln white, which are first order differential operators, on satisfies the uh, Virasso algebra, act on the kernel. So the Virasso, the kernel is a, is a module for the Virasso algebra. It's a module with uh, this value of central charge, which is less than one, on H with this value. And what you can check, so it means that you, and you, can, you can check that it's a reducible module. You get all the element of the kernel by acting with the ln. L minus, you act with the ln on the constant function, with L minus 1, L minus 2, L minus 3, and so on. You repeat, and you get all the function. And this is, for these values, a, a module has a new vector at level at level 2, that is a linear combination of operators of Virasso algebra of the universal algebra of degree 2, which annihilates the constant function. So it's a new vector. So then it's by cuts determinant formula for the, uh, for the bilinear form in the Katz module, Virasso module, we know that it's irreducible for generic kappa. Not for all kappa, for generic kappa. So that's the proof of the claim. The kernel of A is a reducible module of the Virasso algebra. And this has a, a simple interpretation in terms of conformal field theory because this kernel is linked to the correlation function of uh, some field in the statistical model in presence of the interface. And from this number, we know what is the central charge of the corresponding conformal field theory or the co corresponding statistical model. And from this value of H, we can identify the operator which creates the curve, which creates the curve in the model. So that was uh, one thing I wanted to say. I have five more minutes. So then, uh, so then you can go on and on with uh, this construction, this relation between CF uh, conformal field theory and SLE. And so it's a way to see what the relation between probability, because SLE is purely uh, is formulated purely in terms of probability, and uh, conformal field theory, which was usually formulated in terms of algebraic data. But I want to use the construction I, I mentioned to point another connection between uh, conformal field theory and uh, Brownian loop soup. Means one, one second. Be cool. uh, you probably mean one particular conformal block, not correlation function. Yeah, it's holomorphic. This thing is holomorphic, right? No. no. It's not holomorphic. No, no. Ah, oh, pardon. So what you have in mind, you have, uh, your, you have a domain on which you define your statistical model. And let's say when I talk about the Ising, I fix the boundary condition plus here, minus here, minus here, minus here. So for each realization, I will have an interface here, something like that, OK? With plus, 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 and minus, minus. <coughs> so since, since I, I change the condition here, I have to insert some operators, which I call psi which has this dimension here, at the position x0, which is this, that point, OK? OK, and I have the same operator here, psi, if I call it x infinity. <coughs> so all the correlation function you, you, you are dealing with is for this statistical model with this boundary condition. So you have to encode the fact that you have fixed the boundary condition. So all the statistical correlation function 
if you have some observable which corresponds to the insertion of local operators, say, or whatever, that will be O as a statistical <coughs> model in the domain with the boundary condition. They are given by, you have to encode the fact that you change the boundary condition. So you have to insert these operators. So this is, this is a CFT. This is not normalized, so you have to normalize it. But that operator can be anything it's in the bulk. It can be whatever you want. <coughs> OK, so uh, next point is connection with a point and loop soup I want to mention, a connection uh, which I am not sure to really understand. So if you look at a conformal map, which fix, uh, uh, let's say, infinity, you can view it as an element of n minus 1. And then to any highest weight irreceivable module, you can associate an element of the universal, universal enveloping algebra of the uh, n minus 1, of the Vira negative part of the Virasoro algebra, which implement this conformal map. This means by adjoint action on, say, on the primary, on the vertex, on the operators, it will implement the, implement the conformal transformation of that operator under that conformal map. Okay? And you can do it for, for any uh, operator on this uh, uh, g minus, minus 1 will be an infinite set, which will converge in most cases. So then that's, that's work without problem if conformal map is in one of the Borel subalgebra, fixed infinity. You can do the same thing if it's fixed 0. If the conformal map is in n plus, you will get a, another operator which will implement by adjoint action that conformal map. So to define the, the group, you need to make product of such object. So there is no problem to make the product in one order. If you want to act, if you think about not formally as this product, but as this product acting on some highest weight module, then you, can, you have no problem to define the product of g plus times g minus 1, because this one is in the Borel subalgebra. So if you, and this one is g minus. So if you take a matrix element of that one in a highest weight module, only a fine number of terms will be involved, and this operator will make sense. OK? So it makes sense uh, at least in a weak sense, just matrix element. So then the question, when you, so that will be a way to define the, an element of the Virasso group, whatever it means. I don't know exactly, but if the simplest and that will be that one. So I forget the part which is linked to H you can deal with. OK, so you have to insert something in the, in the middle. So now if you want to make product of such object, at some point you will encounter product of G in the wrong order with G minus 1 times G, G plus. And this doesn't make sense a priori in a straight module because it will involve infinite series of terms. So you have to know how to reorder this product. I mean, if you have this product, you want to, to write it as a product of something in the plus subalgebra on the right and minus subalgebra in the, uh, in, on the left. So that's what we do when we do Vic, when we use Vic theorem or we, when we play with vertex operators in conformal field theory. We reorder things. So the way to do it is to look at some commutative diagram, which is tell you how you uniformize some domain. So think about the two conformal maps are linked to uniformization of the upper half plane minus some all, L. So that will be, there is a L associated to Fa, which is N plus, and a L associated to the element, which is N minus one I call Fb. So that tell me what, uh, if I fix some condition, what Fa and Fb are. But then when you want to, and this product will be linked to the uniformization of the two Ls. But there is two ways to uniformize the domain minus these two Ls. Either you first erase B or you first uh, erase A. So if you first erase B, you, have, you use Fb. Then A is transformed into some, some new L that you can uniformize with another F A tilde. Or you can do F first uniformize A, then you get a B, D, a B D form that you uniformize with a deformed map. If you look at this map, is, you can choose a map that, that is commutative. And the fact is it's commutative means that when you do the product of the element which are set to A, B, and A tilde, 
you have two ways to do it, and this will correspond to the reorder of the operators. Okay? But here we have, we don't, we are dealing with the VRA so algebra, which has a central extension. And in quantum mechanics, we can use central extension because we are interested in projective representation, because we on, always you use a uh, adjoint action. So this means that when you do this product of reordering, it's up to a central element. So what you get, get is that if you do the product in the wrong order of that one, then you will get the product in the right order up to some matrix here, uh, element here, which is was log is proportional to C. That you can compute explicitly. And the miracle, which I don't understand, is that now this function has some probability, probabilistic meaning. It's a probability that no loop of the Brownian loop soup intersect both A and B. OK, so that's a question for you. So if you know, okay, if you can answer and tell me why, uh, a good explanation for it, except that probably it's the only possible answer because uh, a conformal uh, invariance. Uh, but I, I think it's not a good enough explanation. So if there is a better explanation, that would be nice. OK. Uh, so I stop here. I will just conclude by quoting a mail I got from uh, Jean-Thierry Ming, who sent me a mail just uh, uh, last Sunday. We a mail for Victor, so that's for him. And uh, I thank you. There are more questions since we already had one. Uh. Yes. Victor, comment. In the Verasov group, uh, the commutator is um, not necessarily the central element. Why do you get only central element? But it has to, it has to be commute. Ah, the commutator, but this is not the same element here. It's deformed. So when I, I, I took two L's to conformal map, which I index by B on A, here I got A tilde on F tilde. So I have to change the map, which corresponds to the commutation uh, in the Virasa algebra. So if there was not these, these things, this, that would be just the weak algebra. So that, okay. But then there is a term which comes from the central charge, which is this, this extra term. And you see, it's exactly, exactly what you take for when you do vertex operators. You have the, the creation part, annihilation part, you commute, you, you get the exponential of the log. That's the ex analog of the exponential of the log. Okay. But the commutation are hidden here. More questions or comments? Thank you very much.